at the home of Tom and Nancy Stevens outside of Stillwater, Oklahoma. And Nancy, you're a homeowner that you've got a little bit of a land here and you've decided to quit mowing your front yard. Can you tell us what made you choose that? That's right. We moved here nine years ago and we used to mow all of this. And um, I don't know, a few years ago, um, um, I was out mowing and I started noticing interesting plants. So I'd mow around them. Uh -huh. and, um, and, and then I found out what they were and I liked it. <laughs> and so <laughs> every year I mowed, I would uh, just leave interesting plants or that I um, finally just quit mowing altogether. Right, and, and so now you have like milkweed and we're finding plantains and... Exactly. It must just be a joy to come out here and see kind of what's new and discover those things. Every, every day I try to take a walk through here and I'm just amazed at, uh, it's just forever changing. There's uh -huh. always something new blooming or uh, something I find that I don't, I have to try to identify and it's just, it's just, uh, I've just loved it. So instead of, you know, having to be a chore, you exactly. have to mow it every couple of days, spin that gasoline and that sort of stuff. Now you just take a walk through it and you get to see things like the Indian paintbrush, mm -hmm. um, you know, the goat's beard, which is this neat little daisy-like flower. Mm -hmm. uh, so what have you learned in this whole process? I mean, you've done some plant ID also. Right. I have, uh, I've, uh, just learned so much about plants and at, at one time I didn't know the names of any of these. They were just weeds. Uh -huh. But now, you know, we have the Indian paintbrush, we have the antelope horn milkweed, uh, there's just, it's just all uh, yarrows out here. You've got and, some rubecchia that's going to be coming right. on later. and Yes. And a lot of colorful, unique grasses as well. Right. And, and in, you know, in um, in two weeks, this will all be different. There'll be something else blooming. Well, uh, you found one that was really unique last year. Can you tell us about that? <laughs> right, and um, I don't know how many times I had walked by this little plant, but uh, I was out walking with the dog and uh, looked down and there was this little, little plant about this tall and it had spiral white flowers around the top, no leaves, and I, I, uh, I identified it and got some confirmation that it was a, um, a native orchid, wow. a terrestrial orchid that, that lives here. I had no idea we had orchids in the United States. Yeah, and right out here in your front yard <laughs> right. in the prairie. And it not wasn't what, in a greenhouse. <laughs> <laughs> not what you think of as an orchid. Exactly. But, but a nice little surprise. Yes. Well, and you've got more across the way. Let's go take a look over there. Okay. So Nancy, just coming across the street, it's amazing how you see different plants over here. Yes. You've got the Mexican hat that's starting to come on, and you only have one Indian paintbrush over exactly. here. Exactly. But... It's here somewhere, but hopefully next year we'll have more. Yeah, and you've got some uh, Rubecchia coming. Mm -hmm. So who ha have you used as a resource to help you identify some of these plants? Well, I have a few books, but um, I'm not trained as a... Uh, you know, bi botanist at all, and so uh, I found a group on Facebook uh, run by the uh, Oklahoma Native Plant Society, and I joined that group, and I have really learned a lot. I mean, I, you take a picture of something and post it on their page, and you get, um, uh, you know, several people that can comment, and uh, at least give you some ideas of what it is, but most of the time their idea is correct. Oh, well, good. Kind and, of leads uh, you down through your research a little right. bit. Right. And so, do you mow this, or what are you going to do with it eventually throughout the season? How well, do you after, maintain it? After our Mexican hats and the uh, Rudbeckia bloom, I will, um, this, this grass, uh, annual grass will grow, you know, will die and it'll, everything will start looking ratty. So probably mid-summer, uh, August sometime, I will mow, I'll mow all this down and except for the grasses. And if you look out through here, you can see uh, clumps of grass, blue stem, uh -huh. and there's some, um, oh, 
I don't know, several different kinds of grasses out here. So you'll let those come And in. I'll let those grow up. And then in the fall, you know, they'll be standing up out here putting on a show. And, and uh, then we'll have something to look at all winter. Well, mowing it just a couple of times during the season sure beats, right. you know, mowing it every week or a exactly. couple of weeks. Exactly. It saves a lot of mower gas. And just look at all the flowers that you get when you really get out here in the garden. That's right. Well, Nancy, you have a lovely prairie garden out here, and thank you for sharing it with us. Well, you're welcome. Thank you for coming. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.